Good morning and welcome to Missoula Real Estate Today. This is Peter Christian. I'm here with the host of the show, Diane Beck, with Windermere Real Estate. Diane has been helping buyers and sellers with real estate in the Missoula area for over 20 years and is very active in the Missoula community. Along okay. with her trusted partners, Diane provides complete service for your real estate transaction. And now, Missoula Real Estate Today on News Talk KGVO.com. 98.3 FM and 1290 AM. Hey, we are back. Missoula Real Estate Today. I'm Peter Christian and joining us in Studio Lee from Mountaintops of Missoula. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks. Good to, have, good to have you back. Yeah, nice to be here. So Thank now you. you were here a little less than a year ago. Mm-hmm. And so I, I would like, if you don't mind, uh, I need to tap some nails again so because folks don't necessarily remember who was on. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and a little bit about you know, what you're doing here in Missoula, how you got here and how you got where you are now oh. with, with mountaintops of, of uh, Missoula. Okay. Well, um, I got here back in uh, 1974, graduated from college out in North Dakota and got a job offer. Um, I was doing uh, architectural drafting and, and estimating technology and basically got uh, hired out of uh, from UBC to come out here. But I had been out here before. Actually, I was born in Bozeman, so... Um, so I was... Uh, we then, promise not to hold that against you. No, I know. <laughs> I, it's kind of a toss-up, you know. I, I'm always covered that way. I can be a Bobcat fan or a Grizz All right, fan. All right, yeah, that's, that's fine. But I'm a Grizz fan, you know. So anyways, uh, got hired from uh, UBC, came out here, and uh, went to work for them for a number of years, and then got into uh, with some of the uh, construction development companies from way back then. I was doing a lot of uh, home designs and... Drafting, and then I kind of uh, uh, graduated into construction management supervisory position, and then I, I did that for about twenty five years wow. for a few different companies in town, um, Fisher Enterprises back in the day, and Western Devcon in the beginning, and um, and then I, was I remember Western Devcon. Oh, you do? Yeah, huh? I do. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, they had uh, quite a reputation at the time. Built some good houses and everything, but then... The, the, uh, I, I had the very first house, this oh. is no joke, the very first finished house on Hillview Way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's cool. Back yeah. back in the mid, I think, mid to mid-70s. Uh-huh. And right. that was right. built by Western Devcon. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they did a lot of housing up there on the hill, you know. So, uh, uh, then I worked for uh, Quality Construction for a little while and, with, and Shelter West, and then uh, things kind of went uh, a different direction for us. Got involved with um, um, a friend of mine that uh, had a cabinet uh, count, uh, company. And uh, so we decided uh, there was no, uh, no companies in town that actually did laminate countertops. And that was at the time that Home Depot was coming to town. Right, right. And so I was able to negotiate with Home Depot to get a contract with them to do all their laminate countertops. And then so that kind of gave us a good kickstart. We had that. uh, So we got that contract. And then we were doing uh, countertops for this uh, cabinet company in town. and, And then things just snowballed from there. And so... We actually just uh, had our 18th year anniversary in the counter- wow. countertop business, and um, it's been going pretty good. 2016 was the best year we've ever had. Of course, 2008 and 2009, we barely got by. Right, but, like, ever, like uh, everybody, really. Yeah, in fact, there are a lot of guys went to the wayside during those years, and we were able to survive. So, well, you, you learn you learn how to be creative and innovative and do yeah. all sorts of things. Too. Yeah. Besides that, you drop your pay. Down to the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that's got up to where it needs to be. Well, now. it's yeah. better than Good. it was. Yeah. All right. Sure. All right. So. so, so tell me about mountaintops of Missoula. I, I obviously you do you do countertops. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about your product and and. Okay. Well, we do uh, we do just laminate countertops, and of course uh, everybody's called uh, uh, called it Formica for many years. Mm-hmm. And Formica is just a brand name. Just uh, Wilson Art, Pioneer. Uh, Nevermar, Arborite, those are all different brands of laminate. And they've, they're all pretty similar. Some of them have a little better qualities than others. Um, but uh, the basic product, uh, uh, high-pressure laminate, is, is pretty much the same. Uh, they've come up with a lot of really good designs these days and patterns and um, textures. 
to where uh, they can be pretty deceiving. They replicate different stones and marbles pretty well these mm-hmm. days. And then uh, we're the only ones in town that have the equipment to make our own beveled edge. So that helps us a lot. Um, and then we have other edge styles available too that uh, we have to order in. But uh, we got a pretty good operation. There's only two of us. We've been there since day one. It's only been the two of us. So we do it all. And so who, who's your partner? My partner is uh, Buck uh, King. And uh, so we've been doing this a long time. He actually was doing countertops and cabinets before we started this business as well. So he's pretty much the basis of our manufacturing department. And, um, and then we go out and install everything together because it's pretty much a two man operation. Sure. Right. Hauling them around and they're pretty heavy. So it's hard oh, yeah. to do it by yourself. Right? Yeah. And yeah. awkward probably is one of the biggest things, you know, uh, but they're real awkward. You know, if we get long pieces, bathrooms and things aren't so bad, but when you get into a kitchen, big L shape or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but we've been pretty busy in that regards and done a lot of so, so let me ask you this. Why, why laminate as opposed to, you know, there, there's all sorts of very fancy granite and quartz and, you right. know, whatever light or whatever, uh, what, whatever the natural stones are that are out there. Why, why, why stay with, with laminate? Well, first of all, laminate's the most affordable one. Um, it's typically 25% the cost of any of the other harder uh, solid products. Wow. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the things. Um, it's got proven durability as far as it's been around forever. People have Everybody's had laminate tops at some point in time. And even to this day, we take out, uh, when we remove old tops, there's sometimes we'll take out tops that are 20, 30 years old, and they still look pretty good. People just finally got tired of the color. Well, let me just give you a, a, a testament. I built my house in 1991, and I have, mm-hmm. I have a laminate countertop, mm-hmm. and we take good care of it, and it looks as good as it did the day we moved in. Yeah, so. yeah. And there's uh, some of the even a little bit higher quality laminates. Uh, Wilson Art makes one. They call the High Definition Series. Uh, typically, it's got a texture to it as well as a hardener that they add to the to the finish coat. So consequently, it's it's a, a super product. And overall, it's really not that much more expensive. I mean, it's not a budget breaker in most cases. Depending, even in a large kitchen, it might be a total of $150, maybe $200 mm-hmm. more for the entire kitchen. So that's usually not a, a bad, big deal. Um, we, uh, we've done a lot of that stuff in commercial buildings. And uh, the, one of the ones that brings to mind is Les Schwab Tire there on Brooks. Of course, they've moved now. Or, right. Uh, but uh, we did all their tops in there. And, French, French company, you know, Les Schwab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And uh, anyways. They we, get a kick out of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we did a lot of tops in their form, all their front counters and everything. Uh, the biggest thing about it, though, is they get a lot of wear and tear there. They say people come in with batteries and, and throw their keys on the counters, and, and uh, batteries might be all gravelly and dirty, and, and none of that stuff uh, affected it at all. I was in there, gosh, the, shortly before they closed that store, and moved, and um, we, I think we did their tops four or five years ago, and they still look like brand new. So, yeah, it's a super product. Uh, but in general, even the, even the basic laminates, the matte finishes and those, uh, and the velvet finishes, even those are every bit as good, if not better, than the old ones. Why, why, why are they so durable? I mean, uh, like, like I tell you, my, in, in our house, we, we're fairly careful with it, but we drop yeah. things and, oh, we, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. What, what is it about this, this product that makes it so doggone good? Uh, I suppose it's, it's the way they manufacture it. It's basically layers of paper with, uh, with glues, uh, uh, um, that are coated in, in glues, and they compress those layers into, into the laminate. And so it's, again, a plastic, becomes a plastic-type product uh, that is very hard. And, uh, of course, it's very thin, and the layers are pretty thin, but as they are manufactured, it makes a, a very good hard product. Um, they can be chipped, just like, but you can chip and scratch almost any of the countertops sure, out right, there. Sure, right, right. Um, but uh, maybe subject a little bit more to that on sharp edges. But once you uh, bevel the edge or you soften it in some manner, it's, um, it's probably a lot more durable in that respect. 
you know, it's now, not as apt to get you, back. You had mentioned that you came up with a way to, to bevel the edges, and, and, yeah. and, and that set you apart, right? Right. Actually, it's uh, um, in the old days, you know, guys, uh, any, any contractor or builder could build the countertops and usually put a beveled wood edge on them, right. you know, because anybody could do that. That's what we have is a beveled wood edge. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but we actually, the equipment, we had to buy $30,000 worth of equipment to do this and it's just it's uh, a number of routers and and you uh, prepare the product by gluing it to substrate and then you run it through these routers different well you rip it down into certain sizes and then you run it through the routers and then there's a clamp system where you clamp it together to create the beveled edge and then you do a final pass that hogs all the excess material off and flattens it out to where it can be attached to the countertop deck so you build the decks first laminate those with the with that whatever laminate you're using and prep all the edges and then um once the, and then you apply the edge after the fact so there's, uh, there's only two of you doing this right so 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 uh who does what <laughs> well <laughs> all right my partner buck he's a, a excellent craftsman i don't think you could find a better one in this town and he's been doing it for a long time he can he can build these countertops backwards and upside down which he's had to do occasionally um, probably quicker than anybody and, and still the quality of workmanship is mm -hmm. superior. And, um, so he does all the manufacturing. He does all the, uh, building of them out in the shop. And then I, um, uh, I order and, uh, of course work with all the customers, get all that, the orders processed accordingly. Then I order the materials in. Once we get them in, then I prepare all the, I break it down when it comes in and uh, cut it into the proper size sheets and then use the other parts and pieces for, for edging. And so I'll make all the edging and the backsplash and have all that ready to go. So as soon as the person, the customer is uh, ready for, uh, for us to come out and measure, he'll go out and measure the job, which works out really well because he gets a feel for the job, you know, and he goes out and measures it. So then when he comes back to build it, he knows exactly what needs to be done. And, um, and then I have all the, uh, all the materials ready. And so he just goes to work putting them all together. And so, so talk to me, talk to me about, about when you go out to the, to the, to the uh, job site and uh, you're starting from scratch, brand new house. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've got their plans. So do you mm -hmm. work with the plans or, or do you wait until the, the countertop is built and then measure? How, how does that work? No, what, um, we can, we can quote uh, off the plans, That's as long as the plans are accurate, um, you know, months in advance or weeks in advance, whatever the case might be. Uh, but we give them a quote, and, and fairly accurate quote, too. Very, very seldom do I have to uh, change a quote uh, once we go out there, you know, and the people have to make a decision on which color they're going to want, right, what edge right. style they want. And, um, can, can we talk about that process? Because sure. do, do you, do, do people literally come into the store or do they go to a website or uh, how do they, because like you say, you've got a whole lot, a lot of choices that yeah. people can make. So yeah, exactly. how, how do they go about making that choice? Okay. Well, we do, we've had a website for many years. Uh, and I really don't get that much off the website other than people might go on the website, catch our name. And we have pictures and stuff in there, but it's one thing about uh, countertops in particular. Um, you pictures just don't do them justice, you right. know. And again, uh, probably a good example is that you can look at a picture of a granite uh, type laminate, and really you could look at it, a picture of a real granite uh, countertop, and you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference in a picture. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so you really got to see it and feel it and, um, and see what, if you're not familiar with it already. Sure. And so, um, so we'll give a bid and I get people that email me plans and I can work up a price in just a matter of minutes. And if I ha have to, I'll just use a basis, you know, of a certain type of edge style and, and a basic laminate and give them a quote and then we can make adjustments according to what their final choices are. And, um. So anyways, uh, then, then I typically make an appointment for them to come in to my office and showroom. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I'll sell 95% of the jobs if I can get them into my office and showroom. Now, and, now, now why, why is that? Because uh, obviously, you're a nice guy, yeah. uh, but, but you know your stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then they can really see it. And there again, that's where it really, 
comes to play. And then a lot of times we've got countertops out in the shop that are in process. I can take them out and show them, you know, the actual countertop. So that helps a lot. And probably the one thing that really sets us apart is that we have a very large inventory of remnants and large samples. Uh, typically, you go into a um, into one of the stores, um, and whether it's a box store or a cabinet shop or whatever, and just like us, they have a big board with a lot of chips, you know, and those small chips, you know, a couple inches square. Well, it's hard to tell, isn't it? It's really hard to tell. And so that's, I'll go out in the back and pull out, a, you know, a couple of sheets, bigger uh, sheets, and bring them into the office and and that's where people really get an idea of what it's going to look like. Yeah, having having had some experience in looking at these chips, I mean they they they're about yay big, right? Like, you know, three two three by three inches or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and you're bringing it up on the oh wow, that looks beautiful. But mm-hmm. but then it's hard to imagine how busy that pattern is going to look when you spread it out over like ten or twenty feet, right? Oh, absolutely. And then too, the other thing about that is that those chips don't show what's really happening in that pattern and they don't show all the colors that might be in that pattern and so that is an an eye opener for the customer and it's not uncommon and then say well where is this part well it's that little <laughs> that little corner over there on the sheet you know that's right. where that pattern that sure. particular piece came from right you know? so uh yeah i've had a lot of people they come in and they think they know right what they want i go right up to that one and and I'll let them check out the samples and take them home. And they end up, well, I better take a couple others and stuff. And they come back and they'll say, the one I originally chose, not even close to what I want, you know. So it's, it helps a lot. So this, this is one of those businesses. But we're talking with Lee from Mountaintops of Missoula, talking about uh, 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 countertops and the fact that laminate countertops and the fact that it sounds like uh, – when it comes to helping choose uh, uh, the right color and texture and that sort of thing, people really need to, you, you develop a trust with your customers to say, and you say, look, in my many, many years of experience and the kind of type of application you're going to have, let's go this direction and this direction. Is that kind of the way it works? Yeah, pretty much. Because uh, a lot of people, they're really, a lot of people are not familiar with the product whatsoever other than the looks of it yeah you know? because they, they think oh it's, this is this is the technology of the past but well, it's really not right right yeah because they're advancing that technology all the time as well you know in, so. in, in what ways are, are they making it uh, more durable more what yeah uh, mostly it's in the in the finish you know i mean um, the patterns and the colors and all that stuff uh, the, those some of them been around a long time actually there's some of the patterns that we've got that 20, 30 years old. So, uh, but they do phase them out, you know, every, if they're not a good seller, they'll phase them out. And in maybe every year or so, it seems like the laminate companies will have a drop and ad where they'll drop the ones that aren't as good as sellers. And then they'll add some new ones. Um, but they, they change the finish and that's what makes the, the, uh, countertop more durable and more susceptible or more um, resistant to all the things that can happen out there, whether it's chipping or scratching, or um, uh, or ju- or getting stained or anything like that. In fact, typically, um, you, it's really hard to stain the new countertops. I mean, or the new laminate countertops, especially. Um, you have to put on, get some really nasty stuff on them. <laughs> And, or the other thing is that we've seen too, that people, they, you know, always see somebody trying to rub out what they think is a water stain. Well, a lot of times it's not just the water anymore. It's, they left water on there, it evaporated and the minerals from the hard water stayed there. And consequently they get etched into the finish and it turns into a, a permanent, uh, etching sure you know so, so is there anything you can do about that uh, as far as being uh, you know the fact that i'll call mountaintops of Missoula. i got this thing on my on my laminate countertop can you come fix it for me actually that's probably one of the drawbacks and really probably the main drawback of laminate countertops is that there's not a lot of repairs that you can do like for uh if it's if you scorched or burned it somehow you know, well, that's going to be true for any countertop, really. Well, that yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, some of the other products, um, they can actually, um, you know, a solid surface or solid surface uh, acrylic surface. Some of those they can actually sand it out 
if it's scorched or something like that. Um, but it depends too, if it's a deep, deep scorch, right, uh, they right. can't do anything with that. But, um, and chips and scratches, uh, the scratch has to be really deep to be able to put a filler in there. Uh, the only thing there is that, um, that you're going to, the fillers that we use, uh, are solid colors. And so if you've got a pattern, if you've got a real busy pattern, there's a good chance that we can, could fix it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you wouldn't even see it. But if it's a subtle, uh, real generic pattern, then you're going to have a solid color repair, unless you've got really artistic. And I've had some people that are very artistic, and uh, they'll uh, get the filler in there, and then they'll come back with their little artist paint wow. and paint the pattern back into it. Yeah, but hire those folks. Well, <laughs> you know, for us, it's easier just to replace the top. Sure, I, I, know, I know what you mean. So is, is primarily, do you more, uh, more uh, new construction or uh, remodeling or what? Oh, we do it all. Um, new construction. I would say that the remodeling is probably... Uh, probably 60% of our business, new construction, probably, um, 25 to 30% of our business and the rest of uh, commercial. Okay. That's what I so, say. So, so, so let's say you've got a husband and wife coming in and, uh, and, and the wife is thinking, you know, I, I I've always dreamed of having granite or quartz or whatever. And well, let's go talk with Lee. And so mm-hmm. it, they come in and they, and they look at your samples and she's scratched her head saying, this looks exactly like what I want. Mm-hmm. And and especially with the price differential, it that, that that's a game changer, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've. Uh, I can't tell you how many uh, people have come in and uh, in two different situations. I've had people come in and say, "I've had all the solid surface, and I've had these. You know, the budget is not an issue with these. You know, certain sure. folks, right? And and I've had all these things, and but you have to do be careful about one thing with one product and got to do something else with another product, maybe seal it or whatever occasionally. And they just say, I'm tired of doing all that. So I just going to put in some laminate, you know, again, and not only that, but, uh, if I get tired of the color or the pattern in a couple of years, I'll just have it done again. You know, no big deal. You know, again, people that don't the budget isn't an issue sure, right, you know, right. compared to, you know, like a $2,000 laminate job might be a $10,000 granite job. Well, right. people are going to think twice before they're going <laughs> to just change out that $10,000 sure, uh, granite sure. job. So, so what, when, when someone gets, a, let's say, in my house, where we, we, we love our house, with the, but it's, a, it's kind of a bland, kind of a beige type thing. But it's, it's been very mm-hmm. easy for us to take care of. So let's say we wanted to change it. Would you? Could you be, go over the top of it, or would you have to do the whole new countertop? Just remove it. That? No, it's not real practical just to go over the existing tops. Okay. Uh, there's a number of reasons in there. Number one reason we won't do it because we can't. Then we can't guarantee it. Okay. And the only one of the reasons we're still in business today after the '08 and '09 situation is because. We've got a uh, our reputation, and we got probably I don't know seventy five percent of our business has been uh, either repeat or uh, referrals, mm-hmm. and so um, and then the way we did that is by you know doing good a good job and being able to guarantee what we put in, and uh, I don't think we've had a dozen callbacks in eighteen years. Wow. And those, those were all pretty minor. So, sure. um, but anyways, um, uh, lost track. that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> so, so we're, we're talking about, by the, by the way, I've seen your truck yeah. out at the Linda Vista golf course. <laughs> Uh, uh, so e- either either you're playing golf or you're putting in c- 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 countertops. Let's just say we play it, we we put in a lot of countertops over there. <laughs> or you're out looking for balls in the water like me. Uh, uh, a little bit of that too. Yeah. All yeah. right. So so let's talk about your commercial business for a uh-huh. second. I, obviously, uh, uh, folks who who want to entertain that sort of thing that that's one thing. But when you got commercial business, like you say with Les Schwab, mm-hmm. and people are are hammering the heck out of a countertop, they just mm-hmm dump things on there. So tell me the difference between the two and, and how you deal with that. Uh, difference between, yeah. oh, commercial, yeah, versus, co- commercial residential. versus residential. Actually, none. There is no difference. Okay. We do this uh, the same product and the same work and everything in, in one versus the other. So and back to commercial work, it just so happens I just gave Charlie a bid over there on Linda Vista to put in some countertops. Go, Charlie, me. go. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if that works out. But 
but no, there is no real difference. Uh, there, you know, the laminates again are are uh, cho- chosen by the people or or the customer, whether it's a you know a, a business owner or or the uh, residential home or whatever. Um, but we build them the same way, and uh, uh, the product is the same, so we don't have any issues. With so that. B- believe it or not, we only have like three and a half minutes left in the show. Oh, so well, we're doing quick. great. So, 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 I uh, if somebody's out there driving around right now thinking, ah, I'm weighing up, what would you want to want to do? Why would I choose mountaintops of Missoula and, and your laminate uh, countertops? I would say because uh, that's all we do, we specialize in it. I'll, I'd put our workmanship and and everything up against anybody in this town, you know, as far as uh, the product and what we what we do, and probably the other thing that I hear so much about from other contractors or or just people that have worked with other contractors in other parts of it uh, is that when we set a time and a date, we're going to be there. That that's that's it. I mean, I don't think we've missed an appointment to do an install or anything and. All these years, maybe well, like, one or two, but it was an accident if we did. Have any, any idea how rare that is? Yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I hear that's really rare, I guess, is that uh, when we doing a job, uh, we clean up our mess when we before we leave. You know, no matter what, no matter how big the job is or how much of a mess there is, which really isn't a whole lot between you know. We do a little bit, make a little bit of sawdust when we have to cut the sinkhole out of sure, place right, and right, stuff. Right. But in and we put floor protection down and stuff, you know, on people's floors while we're working on it. Um, but we clean up our mess and, and we walk out the door and it's ready for the plumber, you know. And people by that time they're pretty anxious usually, sure, you know, to get the plumber. Because in and get I, it done. I would imagine when it comes to a, a remodel that what you do is kind of the next to the last step, right? That's right. That's right. Um, you know, right there with flooring, you know, pretty much. And so once we're done, people want to get that sink hooked up and start using it and they may have been without their kitchen for yeah it's amazing uh some yeah. people have been out without their kitchen for maybe a day or two days and they they're freaking out yeah they're freaking out and we've got <laughs> others that been out without one for six weeks right. and they've kind of got used to it but they're they're really you know by that time they're ready to get it back in yeah, they're they're, they're tired of eating takeout right yeah yeah, yeah and much. doing their dishes in the in the bathroom, you know, <laughs> cleaning the dishes or in the mudroom or whatever. So. Yep. Well, Lee, I, I always ask everybody about this, and I think I did you the last time you were here. When your feet hit the floor in the morning and uh, it's time for another day, what, what is it you just can't wait to get to work? Why is that? Oh, I'm, I'm always anxious to visit with customers. You know, it's fun to talk to customers and work out a deal with them, and, and uh, that's, that's probably my main gig, you know, that I enjoy doing the most. Yeah, yeah, so 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 Buck Buck handles the the, the warehouse work, and you're yep. you're dealing with the customer. Yeah, pretty much, you know. And then um, you know, I go in the shop to do the the, the prep work, um, but he pretty much has control of two thirds of the shop and and uses every bit of it too. So fantastic! All right, so tell me where where do we find you? Uh, give us a phone number, website, location, things like that. Hours? Okay, yeah, our hours are normally um, eight to five Monday through Friday. Uh, most cases, however, since I would, like I was mentioning, since we do, uh, our own installs, we don't leave anybody there at the office to handle, uh, customers. So, but I do, one thing I do, I call everybody back, no matter what the soon, the minute I hit the door, when we get back from the install, I'm calling people back if we got messages. Um, so give, give us your phone number and website. Uh, 543-0319 is our phone number. It's mountaintopsofmissoula.com for our website. And um, you can contact us through either one of those. And um, our address is 1225 Dakota Street. However, we're part of the deconstruction of Russell right now. <laughs> so our street's been closed, so people have to come in the back way. And we are out of time. Thanks so All much, right. Lee. It's a Thank pleasure. You, and that's going to do it for Missoula Real Estate Today. Thanks for tuning in to Missoula Real Estate Today. We hope you found the information over the last 30 minutes to be helpful. If you have any suggested topics for future Missoula Real Estate Today programs or any questions about buying or selling real estate, please email Diane. Here's the address. It's Diane Beck at Realtor.com. That's Diane Beck at Realtor.com. We'll see you next week on News Talk KGBO.com, 98.3 FM and 1290 AM.